So welcome back to another ETCS Bites Back. And today we're going to have a look at the override procedure. So why do we have an override procedure? Well, ETCS is a very effective system. It does some things extremely well. It stops a train being moved without authority, detects unauthorized movements, either forwards or backwards, and it will apply the brakes. But that's a little bit of a challenge when the system isn't working. In fact, it does it so well that if you lose communications, don't have valid position, don't have the movement authority and the supporting track data, then you just can't go anywhere. So despite the fact that it causes qualms for safety engineers and managers when you say that the driver can, with a touch of a few buttons, turn off the safety system, you do need to have a get out. You need to be able to move a train in those failed situations. So in level one, this might occur because you can't clear a signal, but the train needs to go past. It's going to be authorised by the driver. And without having some process to do it, then when the driver passes the signal, the train would get tripped. Another example is where you have section timers. And so the train did have a movement authority, but for some reason it's no longer available. And that could be a section timer, it could be a, another command which has caused the train to lose the existing movement authority. In levels two and three, then not having any communication when you get to the end of authority means that you can't get past it to, into the next section. And there could be things like a communication timeout or emergency stop or trip event, which has left the train stranded in the middle of an area without communication. Or, of course, there could be a fault in the system preventing a movement authority being issued, and that could be a start of mission or during a journey. So how does override work? Oh, before we think about that, let's just think of some other situations where the train trip might need to be overridden. And that includes when you're going to pass over Belize Group with stop if in SR, of course, if you're in SR, or not in the list of Belize's for SR, and similarly for shunting, stop if in SH, which in the specifications is actually described as danger for shunting, but the two bits of subset 26 don't quite align um, and not contained in the list of Belize's for SH. So there are various situations where we want to be able to go past a location without a reaction. Normally it would be an end of authority, but it could be one of these Belize's. Also, if you are in SR, one of the things that can be set is an SR distance. And if you get to the end of that, you'll be supervised to a stand if you're the driver. You may need to go past that location in order to get to the next place where you can get a movement authority or a written order. So how does it all work? Well, the DMI display is a little bit confusing. It started simply to go past an end of authority but the process has been extended for other situations. So on the main display, the driver has driving along and they have an option of override. And selecting the override control brings up a menu on the right of the screen. And on that menu, there is one option, which is to override an end of authority. No mention of getting started, no mention of what, of Belize groups, just EOA. That's the only option. So it's a little bit confusing to the driver. They need to be trained on that. Now, the window for the override is always available, but the actual option of EOA is only available at certain times. Firstly, the train speed has to be under or equal to the speed limit set in the national value for the override function. And that could be standstill zero or it could be a low speed and that applies if the mode is any of the modes which allows the train to be moving so the full supervision limited supervision on site staff responsible unfitted system national or shunting so if the train could be moving and therefore could be moving towards an end of authority although that doesn't really exist other than procedurally for some of those then the override can be selected. Alternatively, if you're in standby, 
then the condition's a little bit more complicated in that you have to be again below that speed, but you also need to have the train data valid and you need to be in level two or three. And so it actually makes it equivalent to having been or would be able to get a movement authority in order to override the EOA. The fact that you're in standby means that you're not actually necessarily at an end of authority, but the front of the train is virtually the, way, the limit of where you can move. And lastly, if you're in post-trip, then similarly, there are some conditions around the speed that which you can select override. That would normally, of course, be a standstill. And because other processes need to be followed before override is undertaken, normally through the written order process, communication with the signaller, then the train would be at a standstill. But there may be circumstances where the driver is authorised to operate override at a low speed. Now, the conditions in the specifications can be quite complicated, and sometimes they are helpfully rewritten in more English English. And so if we look in section 5821 of subset 26, we find a briefer description of when the override should be available. And it, you note it says select override. In fact, it is select the EOA on the override menu that it refers to. So how might it work? Well, if you are in level one, operation in SR is quite common in order to start after uh, start a mission be, to be able to get to read the first signal. If the driver has completed their start a mission, the onboard is in uh, SR, or they've reached the end of a previous movement authority, but the signal ahead of them is still at danger, then they wouldn't be able to pass it under normal circumstances. And if they did pass it, then they would read the Belize group at that signal, and almost certainly it would generate a trip. So override can be used in that situation once the signaller has authorised the driver to proceed. It means the driver can pass the red signal or danger signal and there won't be a trip reaction. So how does the driver trigger override? Well, it's via the DMI, as we've just seen. And once it's triggered, then various things happen. If the mode is full supervision, limited supervision, standby, post-trip, then it immediately transitions to staff responsible. So the first part of the override procedure is to say that you're no longer going to be working with a movement authority or similar if you had one, or if you're in standby, no longer going to be held at, uh, stationary. Instead, you're going to be moving in staff responsible. So that's the first part. If, however, you are in staff responsible, then you remain in staff responsible. Similarly, the next point tells us that if you're already in shunting, then you'll remain in shunt mode. And that's logical because override doesn't apply to go past an end of authority in shunting. There isn't no end of authority in shunting, but it could be used to go past one of those Belize groups. And if you are in unfitted, which means you're in level zero, or SN, which means you're in level NTC, then the override is stored until you change into levels one, two, or three, in which case the train will enter those levels in staff responsible instead of in uh, FS or OS or as appropriate. So it does allow you to enter an area of ETCS from an area of non-ETCS uh, without tripping at the border. So we just need to remember these key points that if your current mode is full supervision, in other words, you have the urge to move, then you go to staff responsible. And if you are in staff responsible, it remains unchanged. And that can be quite critical when we look at how the override works in various scenarios. So with the override active, and that is shown to the driver with the symbol in the screen here, then trips are not generated if the train receives a stop if in SR packet from Belize Group, 
or if it's been told a list of Belize's it can pass over, it won't trip if it finds a Belize not in that list. So the override active is indicated on the screen. But how long is it there for? Well, we need to have a look in chapter five of subset 26, and it gives us a whole list of conditions. And the first one is if the override has been active for more time than is allowed, and that's set in a national value. And that can be set from anything from a few seconds up to a lot of seconds. And if the override is operational for more than that time, then it will automatically turn off. This means you can't just select override and then just continue and continue and continue and ignoring all of the Belize groups or anything else that you might encounter. It provides a limit for how long override is active. Remember, of course, in override, the driver is expected to be applying the same principles as in staff responsible. Also, in the national values, we can set a distance for which the override is available. Now, this can be useful if you have both ends of authorities which have stop in SR Belize messages associated with them and other ends of authority that don't. So if your train has stopped on the approach to an end of authority which doesn't have a stop in SR Belize at it, the driver could override in order to pass that end of authority. And if the override remains active for too long, it could also apply at the next end of authority, which has got a stop if NSR, where the driver is meant to stop. And if they don't, we do want them to be tripped. So the distance can be set according to the design of the infrastructure. Another condition which we'll come back to in more detail is when the former end of authority has been passed by the Belize antenna. So now we have got to the point where we should have had more information, particularly if we're in level one, from the Belize group at the end of authority. So this is a basically allowing us to go past the end of authority that was previously stored. And once we have gone past it and the train is sure it has gone past it, then the override is cancelled because we want stop in SR messages to be remain active. Obviously, if we actually read a Belize group which is transmitting stop if NSR or stop if NSH, Danish for shunting, information, then we want the override facility to be cancelled. That does mean you know, one needs to be careful not to put a danger for shunting Belize group message on the approach to an end of authority because the driver might stop before that Belize group, select override, and the override will be cancelled earlier than expected. If in level one, the train passes over a Belize group, which has got a movement authority contained in it, then that will also end the override because we have fulfilled the purpose of getting to a place where we can receive a new movement authority. And that also applies in levels two and three, if a movement authority is received from the RBC. For instance, we might be passing over a Belize group using the override facility at an end of authority, and the passing over that police group enables the onboard to report accurately its position, and that enables the MA to be received from the RBC. Some features that were added after the initial uh, design of ATCS include the ability to send a list of Belize's that the train is expected to pass over in SR or in SH. And if the train reads one of those Belize groups not in that list, then that would normally generate a trip if they are in SR or SH, but the override stops that happening. But as soon as you read that first unexpected Belize group, override finishes. And remember that in SR, we can set an SR distance that can be traveled, that can be entered by the driver or sent from the system. And in which case, if you get to the end of that distance, but it, it's perhaps not allowed to get far enough, then override can be used so that you can pass that location. So let's just talk about this former end of authority, limit of authority. That makes sense where the train had a movement authority, its driver is proceeding up to that end of authority, 
would expect normally for the new movement authority to be issued. But in this case, it's not being issued. Could be a danger signal, could be the RBC not having sent a, a movement authority in level two. And the driver legitimately needs to go past that end of authority to proceed with the authority of the signaller. So that's what it would work as. And that end of authority is stored on board and is the point by which once you've passed that, definitely passed it and the train considers you definitely passed it, that you no longer need override. However, we have to look at what the text says. And one of the things it says is that if you're in OSLSOS, then you retain the original end of authority. If, however, you are in standby when you activate override, the front of the train becomes the end of authority, so limit of authority. And this then is applied in clause C that we looked at previously, where if the train considers that the antenna has definitely passed over the location of that end of authority, then there's no longer any need for an override to be active. And this does cause a slight problem, as we'll see on a later slide. Now, just to be clear, the end of authority, limit authority, may not be known, in which case, although it doesn't say it, clause C wouldn't apply. And it could be because we've responded to an offer of SR when the driver has selected start. In that case, there is no former end of authority or limit of authority. The train has gone, is in SR when the override is activated by the driver. So there is not an end of authority or LOA created at the front of the train. And sometimes that end of authority LOA can also be deleted as it's described in one of the clauses. If you actually pass over the stop in SR Belize group or you leave SR, then that former end of authority, limited authority is deleted. So it's quite possible that you, the driver will activate override and no end of authority, limit authority will be created. And that can be a bit confusing because some of the onboard suppliers seem, not proven, to assume that if there is no end of authority, limit of authority, then you create one at the front of the train. So let's have a look at it. We're approaching an end of authority. We've got a movement authority up to, I've shown it as a red signal, but it could be a stop marker. And on the immediate approach to that end of authority is a Belize group, and we can assume it'll probably be transmitting stop if NSR, if this is a critical signal. So what happens? Well, the first thing we need to do is check that the train is traveling at a speed lower than the national value speed. That could be standstill or it could be a very low speed. Assuming that's the case, then the driver can call up from the main menu, the override option that will operate and open the override window. And in there, they have the option to select an override EOA. Now, if you're thinking about this from a driving point of view, it might be nice not to have to stop, but You've got to do this, distracting you from looking out of the window, potentially when you're going to be trying to stop at this uh, stopping location to operate a menu. So it may not be the best thing to do. However, having selected EOA to be overridden, then the override icon will appear on the DMI and the DMI will return back to the normal menu. So now the driver has uh, the override active. They may still be moving or they may be stationary. So now we need to consider how long that override will last for. So the first constraint is time. If we set the time too short, then by the time the driver has operated the override, recomposed themselves, started the train, moved down to pass the red signal, the time may run out, in which case the override would stop and the train could be tripped by that stop if an SR Belize group. Similarly, we need to make sure the distance is appropriate. The longer the distance, the further back the train could stop or the earlier the driver could operate override if they're able to continue moving. So if you allow them to move at, say, 20 kilometers per hour 
and select override, then you probably need quite a long distance so that they have got time for the driver to select the menu, select override, and then for it still to be active when the train has gone past the red signal or stop marker. But if you make the distance too long, it then may be active for a longer distance than would be desirable, enabling you to get to the next stop signal and potentially pass that. If our train moves past the end of authority, the former end of authority, and the Belize reader is considered to have definitely passed the, any of the Belize groups which could be at that former end of authority, then that will cause the override to be cancelled. And lastly, in this example, if that Belize group was actually transmitting a stop if an SR Belize message, that would cancel the override immediately because you have read the thing which you are trying to override. So when setting the national values and doing the technical design, one needs to think about how everything is going to work operationally, as well as thinking about uh, the system and how it would work and how you would make a safety argument that you're protecting any hazards. Now, if we look at starting in SR, then if the start of mission process results in SR being offered to the driver, that can be automatically in level one, or it could be the RBC offering it in level two or three, then uh, there is no former end of authority or lim lim limit of authority stored because you're in SR and then the driver operates the override control. And so you can proceed as far as you need to in order to pass that first place where you will get a moved authority. So pass the first signal in level one or get past the first stop marker or other locations so that you can get a moved authority in levels two or three. If, however, the driver knows that they're not going to be able to use start in order to get a moved authority, perhaps they've been advised there is a failure of the system then they can select override instead of pressing start. And that does lead to an interesting behavior. And I'll just explain that for you. So here's our train. It's currently sitting in standby. So the driver hasn't yet passed press start. They have gone through the relevant parts of the menu. They have entered the train data, the driver ID, the train ID. The train knows it is in let us say level two, level three, but it is still in standby. And at this point, the driver can press override, but that activation means that the front of the train will become the former end of authority, limit of authority. So if we go through this route, we now have the train with override active, and a former end of authority and limit authority set at the front of the train, or where the train considers the front to be. So what happens now with the override active if the driver starts to proceed? They're now in SR because that's one of the implications of selecting override. If you're in standby, it causes a transition to SR. So our train starts to move. And it is in override and it moves a distance. And that means that we need to understand when the override will stop. Well, it will stop when the train considers that it has travelled the distance that the antenna is set back from the front of the train, plus an error from the odometry system. So it's a min safe antenna position. So when the train has gone, and this is typically going to be in the order of 10 to 15 meters, then override will be automatically cancelled. Now, this causes a problem if the driver thinks they have gone over the Belize group for which they need to do the override, but actually the antenna hasn't. Because now, if they continue as they would legitimately, then when the antenna does pass over that Belize group, they're going to read the stop if an SR message and cause a trip. 
This caused us a problem when we were doing testing on one of our projects where drivers were uh, operating SR at the override instead of pressing start in order to start the journey and pass the first red signal. They would proceed in SR towards the red signal a short distance. The override would cancel and before they could stop, they would then be reading the stop in SR Belize and tripping. So understanding all of the specifications, how they can interact is quite important. So override normally is a very simple function. It just drives the driver to go past an end of authority. It allows them then to proceed in accordance with the written order and everything works perfectly. But there are a few little wrinkles and trips that can catch you out and understanding exactly how it works is very key if you're going to be responsible for setting your national values.